In this Minecraft civilization experiment, four teams are split up into four different biomes, with each of their own advantages and disadvantages. Now also SCPs roam the lands since the breakout, and well, these creatures are, are none to be messed with. Now there are two different ways to complete this experiment. The first and the easiest is to be the last team standing, and the second and much more complicated option is to work together and defeat the SCP god that is, is located deep underneath the SCP foundation. Will these four teams survive the harsh environment of the SCP Wasteland or die trying? Welcome to the 100 player SCP experiment! If you want to join in on future events, make sure to join the Discord server. The link is in the description. Also, lastly, consider subscribing if you enjoy this video, and go check down below in the description to all the people that recorded this thing. This video wouldn't have been possible without them. Anyways, on to the experiment. It was the first day of this experiment. The sun was high, and the teams were ready to shine. The first team was the bear trap survivors. They loved to step in bear traps. And over on the sand biome, there was a second team that was called the Chaos Insurgency. A fierce set of warriors that loved centipedes. And then where the third team was, was the, was the wasteland biome. They were called the Boomers. They loved explosive welcomings. And over in the last biome, the forests. Uh, this was where team four lied. They were called the, the Forest of Anarchy. A team that was, well, uh, they were complete chaos, and, uh, anyways, now it's time for them to be released. The first team that got released was the Bear Trap Survivors. Once they were let go, they immediately all went separate ways. It didn't seem like any of them were really organized. Immediately, some people started to murder some animals and to get some wood and some useful supplies. Well, uh, one more thing. I decided to join in on this experiment, and I was on this team, and, uh, while my other teammates were getting supplies, me and two others decided to essentially play three-way hacky sack with his poor dog. And yeah, he literally died. Yeah, you can probably tell by now that this team was uh, not the brightest crayons in the box. <laughs> I can tell you that. Anyways, after whatever that was, uh, I led a small group of, of four with me towards that what looked like a, some sort of military base. See, we couldn't just run head on because there were some security cameras, walls that were, that were fortified by spikes and and lastly, a guard armed to the teeth. This is going to be challenging. We had to come up with a plan. Now over on the sand biome, Chaos Insurgency was released. A large group split up and went up to the camp ahead, and the ones that didn't run straight towards the camp like a rapid monkey decided to punch some wood with their bare fists to get some supplies for their team. After these few members collected some supplies, they headed over to the camp where most of their team was. Now speaking of the camp, um, this place was mostly safe. However, there was some Wendigo skulls laying around, and if you step on them, a Wendigo spawns. <laughs> but there was a sign laying there, literally saying do not touch the skulls, so there couldn't be any possible chance someone could step on it. Okay, never mind, I was completely wrong. The Wendigo was on the dash after this well-dressed Steve with a comically large piece of cheese on his head. He ran for his life past two of his teammates to use them as a distraction. Quite a smart move, so he made it away. But then the Wendigo was distracted and started to chase a, a person named Vivo. They tried their hardest to lose this SCP in the dust, and they actually finally succeeded. Congratulations, they didn't die. Now this team seemed like they were pretty good at evading and killing the SCPs. However, they would surely need to regroup and fortify to be able to survive. Now the Boomers, on the other hand, started close to an abandoned city called the City of the Fall. A dangerous city that fell to the SCPs after the breakout. Now when they were released, it seemed like they were very sporadic. Someone to gather wood, someone to right into the city and even rushed inside one of the buildings and trying to take all the loot and weapons they could find. Now while like 90% of their team was rushing inside the city trying to trying to get anything they could find, um, a person by the name of Kai Extreme he started on fortifying a base close to the edge of the map. It seemed like this player was, was like the main builder of this group. He would make a lot more later on in this experiment. Now over on the Forest of Anarchy team, they were in a forest biome with, with like a, a fenced off town up ahead. They didn't have any SCPs inside, but, but the loot wasn't the best. So when they got released, most players rushed over to the town, trying to get anything they could find. They grabbed all the guns, supplies, uh, anything they could find from each of the houses. 
After the Forest of Anarchy team looted all the buildings, they decided to group all their materials together and started to make some guns and ammunition for the workbench. And then after making all their guns and ammunition that they made from before, uh, there were some SCPs around the area, so they grouped together, took them out as a team. It seemed like the, the Forest of Anarchy team was much more organized than the others, at least for now. Their team was, was working together on different tasks, if that was finding food in the town, or becoming an arms dealer, or saying hello to friendly neighborhood animals. This team was hella organized, I am not even gonna lie. I mean, they, they were even the first ones to make a farm. They were also the first ones to mine, and yeah, this team was very focused. They had an amazing start. This might be a, a very hard team to defeat. Now, something that was hard to defeat was this military base. We needed to find a way into this place without dying. So uh, we broke into the military base, but, but two military soldiers came rushing at us. So we came together and showed them the business. Okay, after that desperate attempt at killing these soldiers with weapons that, that are the equivalent to wet paper towel, uh, we found out these guys were insanely hard to kill. And he actually, we actually suffered quite a few casualties due to this because they literally one-shot you and the server was quite laggy at this time because there was way too many people on the server. So, uh, yeah, this did not end well. So, yeah, anyways, we decided to just, like, run right past them and right to the gun storage to kill these soldiers. This was risky, but... It was our only chance of taking this base over. Now, I personally decided to split off from the other group and go to this watchtower. Okay, well, before I show you this, let me take you back about a week before the event. When I was building this place, see, see, I thought it would be funny to catch one person uh, by putting a bear trap on the stairs. <laughs> yeah, this backfired on me. So I literally stepped on a bear trap and half my ankle got melted like butter. Look. If any of you comment I died to a bear trap five minutes into my own event, I will literally step on your ankles. Let's just pretend this never happened. All right, cool. We're all in agreement. Awesome. Anyways, after I survived and single-handedly took out all the soldiers like an alpha male chat I am, an alcoholic picked up the RPG hanging up inside the house. Yeah, out of all people on this team that gets the rocket launcher, it's the intoxicated gamer. The bear trap survivors was... was a literal mess of a team. I had no confidence in them whatsoever. Now back over on the Chaos Insurgency team, they actually found a cow spawner just off of the camp. They could they could actually use this to get some food since the desert did not have much. And while this cow spawner was doing its work, a player by the name of Umber Cinders decided to place a campfire next to the spawner and farm some cows and cook the beef to provide some food for this team. Now back over where most of the people were, which was inside the camp, they started to place some trees and seemed to be working on the works of a huge mine to get tons of materials, which they would desperately need. Now while most of the players were fortifying the base, uh, two players by the name of Greenest Ruby and the other one, Swim Artifact, were scavenging around the area, mining into ruins that, that contained chests for some more loot that they could bring back to the team. It was looking pretty good. This team was, was really having it under control. Now over on the other side of the map, there was the Boomers, and they were, they were inside the city. It seems like they were having quite under control. They, they actually build a, a huge farm that will keep them from starving for a solid three microseconds. And then, yeah, there was, a, seems like a dedicated team that was going into each of the buildings and clearing them out, taking as much weapons and materials as possible. It seemed like teams were finally starting to buckle down and get serious. Now, the Forest of Anarchy was still trucking away at getting their base locked down and secured. They built some barriers, and they also got a, got a bunch of animals into these base using using some boats, and also decided to start growing some trees, even though they were in a literal forest, but hey, was, uh, I'm not gonna judge. Also, there was this guy by the name of Pepe Meme, which wins the MVP award for fishing for the team while playing stall. I kid you not, he did this for a solid two hours. I want everyone to say something nice about this guy in the comments. The bear trap survivors decided to spend this time to lock down the military base. And then they also decided to split up six of their people to go hunting for some supplies around the structures. One of them even had an RPG and yeah, I think this is the same one that Alcoholic had. So let's just assume he blew himself up. Rip Alcoholic. I'm sure you're a great help to this team. 
Anyways, this group of six was heading up towards the apocalyptic biome, collecting any supplies they could find. They then eventually made it to an abandoned house over a pool of lava. It had a bunch of SCPs inside, so they had to be careful. Oh God, do not open that house. After clearing out this house, they were then getting closer and closer to enemy territory. And for some reason, they only had four of them left, so I don't really know what happened to the six. Uh, I'll just assume they got, like, eaten or something. I don't know. Anyways, my, my red brother placed a Wendigo skull on the ground, and, well, something really sad happened. This was so sad, now there was only three scavengers left. These lands were very dangerous, and people were dropping left and right to these things. So this now small group of people decided to head back to the base before more people were killed. Over in the city, the boomers built a huge farm, and they also had some of the players that were still clearing out the buildings trying to get as much loot as possible. While this small group was in the city, it turned night for the first time. This was bad. They had to get to shelter fast, so they ran through the apocalyptic biome towards the base that Kai Extreme made. They had to get to safety, or they'd be dead. They eventually reunited with the rest of the remaining team. I mean, there wasn't much since <laughs> many died at the beginning, but this small team had an underground system with, with lots of lights and places to mine. They also kidnapped an SCP-999. And let me tell you, this creature was amazing. It gives you Absorption 5 if you're near it. Even if this was extremely illegal to, to kidnap this little creature, it was still extremely useful to them. Now over on Chaos Insurgency, uh, they decided to make a bunch of graves in, in front of their bases to commemorate their fallen comrades. And then after a couple of people put signs up and on the tent to claim it as theirs, one wanted to be called the, the tentacle person, because they somehow have tentacles emerging from their body? Don't ask me how, this is this is a new thing for me. And then the other made a, made a tent with a little tentacle pet named Mark. Man, what a cute and probably extremely dangerous pet. Anyways, after that, the, the phantoms were, were here at their base. So they all took cover to hide from them for the remainder of the night. Day two, all teams were trying to work together to make their base sustainable for life so they would have the best chance for survival against these SCPs. Most of the people from the Boomers team that were taking refuge in the city were now all dead, pretty much. And the only people that seemed to be alive were in the other base that was built just off of the shore. Now this little group that was remaining of this team, uh, they already had a sentry turret going on top of their base. Over on Chaos Insurgency, a group of scavengers assumed to be led by Greenest Ruby were heading up to a factory close by. Uh, it was quite infested with SCPs, so they had to work together to take them out. Oh, that is a lot of HP. What? No. I, I refuse. I am leaving. I am at two hearts and will never come back here. I no, have no, two on, hearts. Nope, I am gone. I'm gonna break the wall. And then the group went inside. They had to be extremely careful. And there we go, another tragic death for this team. Uh, man, these SCP things were, were killing everyone. So these two eventually cleared out the remainder of the building and then got all the useful supplies and brought them back to their own team. Now over on the Boomers team, they were trying to set up as much protection as possible. They decided to make a fortified bunker with some security doors where the only people that can get inside is the people with the codes. And they also had a huge, powerful turret on the top of the roof. Now it was day three of this experiment, and all teams suffered countless casualties. Now the only players that were left were the most geared and organized ones. Now the sun soon rised, and the boomers have decided to emerge from their base and decided to work together to kill all the creatures nearby. And after when they were killing all the, the things outside, they also ran into uh, something a little sus. <laughs> They stopped their thing. Kill it! Kill it! Oh my god. Anyways, after this team murdered a poor little imposter, a group of three decided to head over to the city to grab as much loot as they could possibly find inside the chests. 
Then after when this group of three was done collecting stuff, they decided to split up and these two decided to go towards the desert. And what they found was absolutely terrifying. They're definitely aggressive. Okay, that was an entire mag. There was another one, but I don't know where it went. Just not deal with that. I hated that noise so much. After that issue, they decided to actually head back towards the base so they wouldn't get harassed anymore by those, those dangerous centipedes. Now the Forest of Anarchy team was looking pretty good, to be honest. Pepe Meme was still on the grind for fishing and literally vibing out. And this team also built up a huge farm so they would never run out of food. It was day four. Each of the teams seemed like they were pretty solid. Not many people died between now and the day before. Each team was surprisingly doing quite well. Now over on the Bear Trap Survivors, even though they had the, the least amount of players, still had the best armor out of all the teams. One player even had full diamond armor somehow. It seemed like they had a pretty good plan going on, having pretty much the entire team staying at the base and then assign some of the teammates to mine. They wanted to play it safe and that was clear. The Forest of Anarchy team was uh, continuing to build their, their farmland and, and Pepe Meme seemed to have recruited another fishing friend. Man, this is the friendship we all strive to have. Now, while all this was going on, uh, someone by the name of Polak Polakzek, or I don't know how to say the name, but yeah, they were deep in the enemy's territory. But he ran into a dangerous SCP and died really close to the Chaos Insurgency base. But before he died, he told his team some crucial information about Chaos Insurgency, saying that they were, they were basically weak. So this gave the Forest of Anarchy team a little idea to maybe launch a potential attack. Things were honestly a bit more calm back over at the Boomers team. Uh, they actually made a graveyard for all the people that died. Well, I mean, not everyone, I guess. The only ones they cared about, but... Anyways, they also built a nether portal inside the fortified base. It seemed like this was their main home now. So you know when I said the Forest of Anarchy team was gonna launch an attack on a team in, in the desert? Well, it was about to happen. A group of three planned to go out in the middle of the night to launch a sneak attack. If they could kill a couple members, then this team would have an advantage. So they quietly made their way to the desert, trying to be as sneaky as possible. Now over on the team in the desert, it was quite clear that they were not messing around. The walls were completely fortified and the only downside was they had most phantoms spawning at their base. Now with it being day five, new things were on the go. All teams were trying their best to survive under these harsh environments. At the beginning of day five, the boomers decided to add a whole bunch of graveyards, as well as they decided to put a, a motivational sign inside their base just to remind their teammates uh, not to die. This was a very helpful sign and stopped their teammates from ever dying again. So remember that small group of three that decided to launch a sneak attack on uh, over on uh, Chaos Insurgency? Well, they arrived and they were very close to this team's base and they had no idea. You can shoot through, through the iron bar, so I'm just doing this. I see people. Uh, oh, open fire. The group of three from the Force of Anarchy was soon spotted. Things were gonna get a little bit more complicated. They soon opened fire to defend all that they had. No scavengers were gonna take their stuff. Now while the bullets were flying everywhere, a person by the name of Storm the Fish made an amazing sniper shot on Sir Codes. These two soon rushed to create cover between them and the other team. It was not looking good for Void and Moonlit Skies, so they decided to retreat back into the mountains. And they kept digging and digging while blocking up the hole, making sure no one was following. Now it was just Void and Moonlit Skies trying to escape from the Chaos Insurgency. They dug far into the mountain, trying to make it away from this team. Oh, I got our six. All right. We need some loot, bro, like seriously. These two eventually made it to the surface. However, one member by the name of Stormfish, the same one that killed Sir Coates, was waiting nearby, and he was alone. This was the best chance these two could get their revenge on the death of their teammate. Who are you? Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah! He got revenge, baby! <laughs> yeah, so this was enough death for these two at least. They didn't want to lose any more teammates since they didn't really have a lot. So they headed south back towards their base.
Now over on the Boomers, uh, they decided to finally move everything out of their old base, including their little SCP friend. Now this wasn't really easy as it sounds. Uh, it seemed to be actually quite difficult to get this thing up, the, up a flight of stairs. Now while this was happening, two players by the name of Red Sheep and Scytheman were heading over to the middle of the map near the SCP Foundation to build something, uh, something that may change the fate of this experiment. Now after the attack, Chaos Insurgency was pretty paranoid. They uh, continued to build up the walls to the base and also seemed like they had a, a creeper grower. It was pretty good, so they had an infinite amount of gunpowder for their guns. However, they were really strong and they had a lot, but um, they did not have much iron. So Greenest Ruby, their main scavenger, went out in search for some structures to raid. Now Void and Moonlit Skies, on the other hand, actually made it back safely to their base. However, it was night and they didn't really want to lose any more members. They just kind of stayed inside the base and uh, actually discussed some possible alliances. We're like the last of the brain team, right? So we need to make some decisions. Um, firstly, we're pretty sure teaming with yellow is out of question since we killed one of the teammates. I'm sure uh, they uh, don't yeah, you'll know that. Us, right? <laughs> also, one more thing I wanted to point out. Pepe meme disappeared. I, I literally have no clue where he went or what happened to him. So let's just say he got his hands stuck in a, in a jukebox and then a fish ate his entire head off. Rip Pepe meme. Now over on the Chaos Insurgency, they actually had a, a little bit of issues with some zombies. However, the scavenger that went out recently, this person was stuck in the middle of the desert and it was night. It was not looking too good for this player. After they made a run for it, but didn't see the centipede SCP that was nearby. He desperately tried to escape the SCP, but it was too late, and Chaos Insurgency just lost their main scavenger. This was not looking too good. This team was at a severe disadvantage. So remember the two players, Red Sheep and uh, Scytheman? Yeah, so they wanted to build like a, like a peace council. See, this team was the first team to realize how much death and destruction everyone was facing from the SCPs. So. They went to building, and they were building for a long time. So it was day six, and some teams faced huge setbacks. Things on this SCP infested wasteland were not looking very good. I don't know how they're gonna survive. So the bear trap survivors, uh, since I didn't really get much footage of them yesterday, um, I'm presumably just guessing that they were trying to collect a whole bunch of resources from structures in the wasteland since they, they didn't have much at home. So yeah, they were just out collecting as much stuff as they can. Now, not too far away from the bear trap survivors team was Kai and Stratus, two individuals that were keeping the base protected. Oh, he deals your entire health bar in one hit. I died, guys. What the heck is this? 15 attack damage? Now, it was just refreshing to see this team very serious about, about their strategy since they lost the teammates and now had the least amount of players out of everyone. So yeah, this team was really in it to win it. Uh, they were locking down, not fooling around whatsoever. You know what? I will trade you all my, all my weapons, uh, all my belongings, and every, just everything for... What, what, what would you give me? What would you give me for that? Piece of dirt. Oh, a piece of dirt. Oh, thanks. Now it was night, and it came fast. To be honest, all teams were pretty prepared. They all were surviving and got through the night with no struggle really at all. Well, except for Chaos Insurgency. They, they had some issues. What in the actual... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where she... Do I have a curse? Yeah, this team was not getting the best of luck. Day 7, each team faced countless deaths. These teams may have to find a way to work together. All four of them were heading north. They wanted to get some more materials from any structures they could find, but they had to try to get around the countless SCPs along the way. I was destroying the spawner! 
So the Force of Anarchy was now deep in the forest, and they were heading east towards an abandoned structure. This place had some really good stuff inside that the team needs. However, there were some creatures located in this building that were none to be messed with. These four people didn't know what was coming. Soon, one of their teammates went down. This was bad. They only had three left. And another one down. They only had two people left. This was bad. Things looked quite grim for Forest of Anarchy. Pretty close nearby, Chaos Insurgency decided to head out southeast towards the Foundation. It seemed like they wanted to take a look at it, so they worked as a team and made the long journey towards the middle of the map. Kai then decided to go to the Peace Building to reunite with the rest of his teammates. Just being over here is causing my frames to drop. Now, his other teammate that he was with before uh, was presumably getting some supplies and uh, some weapons for the team. However, this just shows you why you should never travel alone. Now, not too far away from this place, Chaos Insurgency finally made it to the Foundation. And when they arrived, it seemed like one of the SCPs was trying to lure them inside. Hello? Hi. Which team are you? Oh, that's one of those SCPs that talks. That's one of the SCPs that talks. Oh. It's trying to draw you in to kill you. Okay, I don't think we should go in the foundation anyways. Yeah, they didn't really fall for it. I mean, how funny it would have been if they did. They didn't really go inside the foundation, which was, which was probably a good idea since there are a lot of dangerous things in there. So yeah, they just camped out for the night, which probably was the safest thing to do, to be honest. So after that tragic event where both of their teammates died, they traveled back home and finally arrived with no casualties. However, they only had two people left. It seemed like their only chance for survival was an alliance. So they were just hoping that all teams would agree, no more killing. It was day eight, and it seemed like a lot of the teams wanted to alliance. This was the only chance for survival. Now over on the boomers, Kai and Red Sheep ran into a little bit of a problem. There were so many chicken creature things around the area, and if they wanted to have any peace meeting whatsoever, they would need to clear some of these guys out. <laughs> I panic voted it. Oh my god, we're better. Eventually, most of the SCPs were uh, cleared out, and Kai decided to use his helicopter to go speak to the Chaos Insurgency team that was nearby. We Hi. literally have a safety bunker like right over there if you guys want to go help work on it. Uh... Sure. What do we have to lose? Our lives, right. but um. Wait, can you guys get in the helicopter? So they discussed it, and Kai decided to take each of the people one by one to the peace place. This was the beginning of a possible alliance. It seemed like the teams did not want war at all. This was very interesting. Now back over on the peace place, Red Sheep decided to make a little shrine for me. That was totally not mocking me because of me stepping on a bear trap. Man, what a great player. Oh, also, Mark is back, by the way. I haven't seen him since the beginning of this experiment. Man, this is a great sight to see. Now, I didn't really have any footage of Forest of Anarchy Team since all the footage was basically corrupted. Anyways, they decided to head straight towards the middle of the map, where all the rest of the teams were. It seemed like they wanted to alliance, so I, I have a feeling they'll just not shoot anyone, hopefully but give some people in Minecraft guns and they'll do a lot of crazy things. All right, and it was night. These teams decided to build a little shack. It was pretty crowded, but hey, size doesn't always matter. Oh, also, Forest of Anarchy team finally made it to the middle.
Now, the Bear Trap survivors, which no one knew where they were, they were actually really close by to everyone else. So they went up to the rest of the players and said a little hello. Hello. It seems like all the teams were now united as one. Yeah, every team was taking this this very seriously. Are you gonna pull a gloomless? Hey, 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 what's up? Hi. You almost followed in your teammates' footstep. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> On day nine, all the teams were united and ready to work together. There would be no more killing one another. Will these teams be able to work together and kill the SCP God or fall and lose the world? In the morning, Kai returned in his helicopter like an angel riding in from the sunset. Everyone was so happy to see him. Helicopter, helicopter. Oh my god, you're alive. Oh my god, Kai, I thought you were dead. Oh my god, you're alive. And now since everyone was reunited, they all were just chilling near the foundation. There was no killing. Everyone was friendly. All the people were in agreement to talk for a possible peace meeting and talk about working together to clear the SCP Foundation. And lastly, to kill the god SCP, the deer. An insanely tough to kill SCP. However, if they could work together, they could definitely kill this creature. So they all went inside the Peace Council building. This was gonna be quite the intense meeting. Single file line! <laughs> Come on! Get it! Single file go, go, line! Go, 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 go. Go. No, no, no! Mark! Behind no! Mark! Mark! No! Mark! Behind Mark! No! Mark! No! Mark! This is supposed to be a peace treaty thing. Well, no one's killing anyone yet, so... Who is destroying the lights?! <laughs> so yeah, anyways, eventually everyone shut up and Scytheman gave his speech. My okay, job. so essentially, we're gonna raid the Foundation. Hard job. However, we can do it pretty easily as long as we all decide to cooperate. The hard part about it is... You guys shutting up long enough for me to finish talking. Now that we have this straight... Who is ready to go kill some stuff? And then this group of fierce warriors marched into battle. This is going to be quite dangerous, but with the power of teamwork, they may have a chance. Then they finally made it to the teleporter to take them down to the dear god. However, there was one problem. The peanut man was guarding it. They had to find a way to sneak past him. You know what? Guys, I found I found a solution. Move away. Move away. Yeah, so I guess the, the peanut man was on his day off, so he didn't really move at all for some reason. So yeah, they decided to block the peanut man inside the inside the room with, with the teleporter and then finally go down to fight this SCP guy. This was going to be a difficult battle, so they all went down and prepared. And with the power of friendship, they defeated the SCP God. Not once, not twice, but three times. 
in under a goddamn minute. They successfully completed this experiment, and one without killing each other. They worked together and got past their differences to stop war. Because in the end, war will never solve problems. So after this glorious victory, all the teams celebrated with a metric ton of vodka and a few thousand of uh, these things, whatever the, the SCP-999s. Yeah, this was a party. And to end this experiment off, they decided to sacrifice me and fire and sing their favorite song. Hey, it's time. Super nice you. showing you. I'm being burnt alive. Whoa, why is there so many marks? Hey, it's a party! Man, what an amazing conclusion to this experiment. Oh, and I also was bored and gave everyone creative mode at the end, and it was, well... Alright, so thanks for watching the video. If you want to join some more future events like this, make sure to join the Discord server. Link in the description. Also, massive thanks to all the people that participated in this event. You guys made this event awesome. And finally, here are the awards given out to certain players and the teams in this experiment.